All right, welcome back to this shit. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. <laughs> nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but I at least keep my word compared to other things that I do mostly every single day. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Spangle. <laughs> I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Make you dive head first in the literature when you're not accustomed to it. Oh, come on. Like he doesn't any, deserves any slack. Terry told me you don't even want to join any clubs this year. And last year, too. I don't know if you plan to come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take it seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. <coughs> Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. <laughs> manga is literature! And I'm gonna go read it, bye! No one should know about what's in it, though. Don't ask, don't look at it, please don't, at least, no. Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. Hey guys! Don't worry guys! He always gives it his best as long as he's having fun. He helps me with busy work without even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room. How dependable! Sorry, that's because your room is so messy it's distracting. And all you almost set your house on fire once. Is that so? <laughs> you two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous, because I'm the kind of person that would be like that. So you better watch behind your back, because if you don't, I'm gonna stab you. It's either gonna be back or in your stomach, and I'm gonna let all the contents just spill for everyone to see. Okay, that got a little dark, I'm sorry. <laughs> How come? You and Spanky be good friends, too. Um... Sayori? <laughs> As we were saying, see, Olivia's the weird situation you just put me into. Look at that fucking face. She doesn't know anything of what she's doing. Stupid fuck. Oh, oh! You even brought you something today, you know? Oh, wait, Sayori! Eh, uh, me? Um, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? Never mind! Sorry, man, it's not like a big deal when it's really not! Uh, what did I do? Yeah, I'm sorry, you're right, I wasn't thinking. I guess that means it's up to me to rescue the situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. Is that so? Yeah, I won't make a big deal if you won't don't want it to be. Alright! Well here! Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I don't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you want. And then I'm just gonna fall to my hair and not worry about it. Don't even think about it, just, just go away! I don't want to see you anymore, bye! This is... How is this girl accidentally being so cute? I'm not agreeing with that. She picked up a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. Uh, thank you, I'll definitely read this, maybe. Chunks out the window, breaks the glass window. <laughs> I enthusiastically- I enthusiastically yeet the book out the window. For no one to see. Anymore. I don't need this. This freaking stuff to read on the internet. There's no reason for actual books. Phew! Alright, I gotta click. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Not even now that everyone's settled, I expect Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Sorry, Monica, are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression like she was waiting for this chance. <laughs> Excuse me. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. I'm really curious. Just to talk to Yuri a little bit more. I'm not. I'm really not. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to any of you. I just want to leave. But at the same time, I feel bad for distracting her from her reading. I catch a glimpse of the cover of her book. It looks like the same book that she lent to me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Ah! Crap. I think she noticed me looking at her. Notice she most because she got the same book. The freaking Melvin. But I guess it's fine. I don't know. Nah. 
She takes another glance at me, and our eyes meet for a split second. That's relatively normal. Why are you worrying about that? Then, that only makes her hide her face deeper in the book. Sorry, I was just spacing out. I might have just in a sense that made her uncomfortable. Oh, it's fine. I was focused then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. But I'm just rereading a bit of this, so... That's the book that you gave me, right? Mm-hmm. I want to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason. Just just curious, how come you have two copies of the same book? That's, that's kind of weird. I mean, usually most people just have one co copy of a book. Like, unless it's like a expensive, ex limited edition signed copy of the original book. In mint condition. I don't think you'd have two copies of the same book. Ah! Uh, well, when I stopped at the bookstore yesterday... Uh, that's not what I meant. I mean, I decided to buy two of them. I see. Something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decide to let it go. That's probably for the best. In fact, I just want to leave here. I don't want. I don't like the literature club. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. Is that so? What's it about anyway? Well. Yuri closes the book and scans her eyes over the back. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an obvious looking eye symbol on the front cover. Alright! I just want to make sure I don't actually like, give away anything away. Basically it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her lost, long lost younger sister. But as soon as she does so her life gets really strange. Like Lovecraft again! Gosh dang I to keep going to this but you know what it just it works! She gets eaten by Cthulhu! The end! She gets she gets targeted by these people who escape from a human experiment prison. <laughs> and while life's in danger, she needs to desperately choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships, and her life starts to fall apart, like most of the stories and games based upon Cthulhu and Lovecraft. It's kind of it's kind of dark, isn't it? You made it sound like it was going to be a nice story, so that dark so that dark turn came from nowhere. <laughs> Yuri gently giggles all of a sudden. That wasn't a giggle. That was a fucking maniacal laugh. Are you not a fan of this sort of thing? N no, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy this sort of story. Don't worry. I hope so. If you don't, I'll stab you. Nothing's stopping me. They're over there doing nothing. If I'll stab you. No one will know. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri is into these, those things. That, that makes it worse. She's into stabbing me. <laughs> She's so sly and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just that those kind of stories, they challenge you to look at a life from a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because they have their own goals and their own philosophy that they believe in. Then suddenly, when you thought you related to the protagonist, they might be naive for be the naive one for letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plans. I I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. I'm going back to my corner and just. Cover myself in this blanket. Don't bother me. The darkness is what makes me feel normal again. I, I don't apologize. But you can still go back into the corner. I don't want to see you. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's all right then. But I feel like I should tell you now. To, to let you... Fuck. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When other things like books and writing fill my thoughts, I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. I mean, please stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. I mean, if you worry so much, just go to a psychiatrist. Or a police officer. One of them will fix it up. Maybe. That just means you're passionate about reading. Are you sure about that? The least I can do is listen. I'd rather not. I don't like listening to books. It's a literature club, after all. I keep pressing right-click. Ah! That's... Well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? You, you don't have to! D don't worry about it! Don't read that! D d d it's inappropriate! It's not safe for school or work! D don't look at it! Okay? Oh, uh, what are you saying? Just a moment ago, you said you were looking forward to it. Fuck! Let me just get the book. I clearly drew the book that I had to put in my bag. Alright, it's fine if I sit here, right? So in the seat next to Yuri's. Uh, yeah! Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's, it's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. 
That is really coming with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. All right, all right, I guess. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. Sorry! I'm illiterate! I lied about it all! I'm sorry! I was just... Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? I do! I, I don't really mean to! Sorry! I mean... Fuck! <laughs> yeah, this should work, right? I slide my desk until it's up against Yuri's and hold my book more between the two of them. Uh, I suppose so. She timidly closes her own copy. <laughs> Instead, I just grab it and yeet it out the window, along with the first book. This is the third book that just magically appeared in front of us. <laughs> once, we re once we each lean in a bit, our shoulders are almost touching. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so I instead use my right hand to hold open the book. Ah, I guess that makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here! Well, that's a, that's odd looking. That'll work. Yuri takes the left arm and holds the left side of the book between the thumb and forefinger. Ah. I do the same with my right arm and on the right side of the book. Why is the music still all cheery? I don't like it. That way, I turn a page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after it flips to her side. But in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer together before. It's actually kind of distracting me. Especially since she keeps rubbing against me and I do not like it. Please stop! Okay? I, I get it, but you don't need to do that! It's as if she, I can feel you, the warmth of Yuri's face as she's in the corner of my vision. I won't call that warm, I call that cold. Are you ready? Eh. To turn the page! Ah, uh, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second. I'm gonna your face again and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Ah! Oh, that's okay! You know, it's just reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. You're prob it's, prob it's probably the least I could do! If I can talk! I should shut up! My voice is so annoying! <laughs> Since you've been so patient with me and my annoying-ass voice! Eh, don't worry about it! Y yeah, thanks. We continue reading. She no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I assume that she finishes the page before me, so I turn it by my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. My thumb gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her... This is a weird reading. Dating sim. I don't like it. Where is the things that gave me the warning of... Anxiety and depression and all the not safe for children. Hey Yuri, this might be a silly thought, but the main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. Why would the fuck would you say that? Why? Y you think so? How does she? Because she's crazy on the inside, probably, and wants to stab people. Like the person she's right next to with this pencil. It's really sharp, you know. I could break it off inside you that way the bleeding would stop, but it'd still hurt. Well, I guess she's more blunt in a lot of ways, but she also second guesses all the things that she says and does. Like she's afraid she'll do something wrong. You mean like stab someone? Yeah, exactly like that. It's not like I can can see it into your head or anything, but they kind of remis kind of remis remis reminiscent, but they're kind of reminiscent of some of your mannerisms. There we go. I see. You remain silent for a moment. But Spankor. Your, well, your name is stupid! Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's probably a terrible thing to have in common with her! That, that's so amazing that you think that, you fucking asshole! W wait, I didn't mean it in a bad way or anything. Sorry, I really didn't know you were self-conscious about that sort of thing. I guess I meant it more, it's kinda cute. <laughs> uh, shut the fuck up! What are you saying, what are you, are you saying all of a sudden? Okay, everyone. I think it's about time we share today's poems with each other. Fucking heartless bitch. We might not have enough time if we wait too long. Ah! Yuri exhales spare from finishing her thought. Is that alright, Yuri? You look kinda down. I'm sorry if you haven't been looking forward to this. It's not... It's, it's fine! Don't worry about it! She reaches from the hand of the book, causing to close on top of her thumb. 
and then using her hand slides off the desk, sl slightly yeeting it against the wall, making the book get embedded into the wall. <laughs> All right, I guess I'll do some more reading tonight. Or would, you, or would you prefer I only read it with you? Um, I guess I don't have too much of a either way. Hmm. In that case, I'll read a little more tonight. It'll be important to read with you after it picks up a bit. You know, the weirdo. That's good reasoning. In that case, feel free to finish the first two chapters in your own time. And then write a 70-page essay about each chapter. And about how I'm not like the girl. And if you find any way that I'm similar to her, I'll stab you. All right, I guess. Uh... I stand up, I make a mental note of where I left off in the book, and then slip it into my bag. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? Y yeah Go away. My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I can't really find much inspiration since I've, on I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share it with? I can't wait! <laughs> Ser sorry, sorry. Blah, 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 blah. Sayori and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sayori's is on the wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica's wrote hers in a composition notebook. You can already see that Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. Who should I show my poem to first? Eighty meeny, miny mo. I don't care. Either way. Uh, da ba do boo ba da boo. Let's start with Tiny. I told Natsuki I was interested in her poems yesterday. It's probably only fair if I shared mine with her first. Eh, I. Spank car, if you're not going to take this club seriously, then go home. What? what? Harsh. Why do you expect me to believe that you actually put effort into this? Do you think I'm stupid? I mean, probably. I'm not a writer. Maybe it's not very good, but yeah, I did put it in effort. We all start somewhere, right? If you're still pr if you're still proud of the first poem you ever wrote, then I'd like to read it. Ah. Painful to think about? Huh? You bitch. Fine, I guess. Oh, sorry. You'll get better anyway. I tell you what to improve, but you're better off just trying again. Fair enough. Well, they each their own, I guess. Anyway, I guess I gotta share mine now. Knowing you, you'll probably think it's stupid. Eagles can fly, monkeys can climb, crickets can leap, horses can race, owls can seek, cheetahs can run. Eagles can fry, people try, but that's about it. That's not a poem. That's fucking stupid. Click outside the poem area to continue. Yeah, I told you that you weren't gonna like it. I like it. I don't fucking like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because... Everyone I school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and things. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly. I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. That's just a simple rhyming one for fucking babies. <laughs> Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight in the, on the wordplay. Like I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line, I guess. So you did. I guess more went in it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. Even though I'm only a first year probably and I'm, I don't know. I might yeet myself out the window by... I'm glad you learned something. Don't expect that from the youngest one here, did ya? Yeah, I guess not. I said a humor with the last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Nezuki is feeling proud that I won't take anything of that away from her. Okay, well, it's fucking time for fucking... The one that's gonna hurt my voice. Hm. This is a good poem, Spangor. I showed it your first time. Of course, it's not that good. Am I the kind of guy who would... Be writing poems in this spare time? Uh, I guess you're right. Well, that's why it impressed me. Well, to be honest, I was afraid that you wouldn't do it seriously. Or that you wouldn't write one at all. I'm really happy you just wrote one. I keep it in right clip. It just reminds you of how you're really part of the club now. Not sure the fact I'm standing in front of you in the club room. 
Uh, well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I'll break my promise, I guess. See? It's like I said before. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Well, you just don't take care of yourself. It's your own fault. Try new things like this for new other people. That's something only good people do. Thanks, Sayori, I guess. I'm not really sure if she sees the full picture of my motive here. Then again, I can't deny she's part of the reason I joined. I wonder how much this means to her and all. Yeah! I'm going to make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? Just don't read Natsuki's manga collection! It's very etchy and you don't want to read it! Tell me why I'm thanking you! Alright, I'm going to hold you on to that, then. Just make sure you hide it, please. I don't want to see it. Yay! Now you read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> well, let's we'll see about that. Oh shit, there's actually weird words. Dear sunshine, the way you glow through my blinds in the mor- Oh, I got read in her voice. Dear sunshine, the way you grow through my blinds in the morning makes me feel like you missed me, kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub the sleep from my eyes. Oh, you asked me to come out and play. Oh, you trust me to wish away a rainy day. I look above, the sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever. But I'm not mad. I want breakfast. That was dumb. Uh, uh, Sayori. This is just a guess, but... Did you wait until this morning to write this? No! Just a little bit. You can't answer just a little bit to yes and no in question. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me feel better about myself. Don't be mean! I still try my best. Ah, yeah. I didn't mean to say it was a bad poem. It came out nice, and how should I put it? Sounds just like you. Stupid. Really? I'm kidding. You're not stupid. You, you look stupid, but you're not as stupid. Yeah. Especially that, that last line. I made eggs and toast. I didn't have bacon. Even though you were late to school. It's bad to skip breakfast, okay? I get all cranky. Well, I guess there's... Oh, fuck. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. <laughs> this was so much fun. Monix is the best. Uh, yeah. But next time I won't forget. And I'm gonna write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I look forward to it. I start with fucking calm-ass evil bitches I've made her into. Hi, Spancor. Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah, I guess. Good. Glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, have you ever had any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better? I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course I'll be afraid to bring things up! I'm not better just, I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Like eating myself out the window again. Anyway, wanna share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry, Spancor. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know. But it's that sort of barrier that we'll all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true, I guess. I had Monica my poem. Mm-hmm. Great job. I was going ooh in my head while reading it. It's really, really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easy to do that looking at your Melvin fucking face. No one's ever liked you before except for that stupid bitch. But that's fine. You'll get used to it, to people not liking you. Uh, it's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That was really mean of you, you know. Other anyway, that way it always counts when I put in some effort. That's not very fair. You should really stop doing that. You should always- you guys should put your expectations higher. Try to be better than everyone else to make people like you. I guess it worked out anyway. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imagery and imagery and symbolism. Unlike Sari, who likes using simple and direct words to describe happiness and sadness. Yuri likes it when readers are left to derive their own meaning out of it. It's very challenging to write like that effectively. Both allowing people to get something out of it just by feeling. Or letting them deeply analyze all the nuances. It can take years of practice, which I'm assuming Yuri has at this point. I never really asked, though. I'm sure I'm nowhere near her level yet. Don't worry about it so much about that. You do your own thing. Just keep exploring and learn by trying new things. 
But remember, try to set yourself higher to be better. You want to be better than Yuri and me, don't you? Then keep trying, you stupid bitch. I'll, I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. It could take a while before I feel comfortable about doing this, especially since you're putting me down. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find a style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little bit biased toward their own kinds of styles. But I always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the, the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. <laughs> but you're going to do it anyway. Because you have no choice. Yeah. I mean, I pretty much really don't have a choice. That's I'm pretty sure that's what this game is about. Anyway, do you read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to be not very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it then. Oh. Oh. Hole in a wall. It couldn't have been me. See the direction the spackle protrudes? A noisy neighbor, an angry boyfriend. I'll never know I wasn't home. I'm peered inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reel, blind, like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late. My retinas already scorched with permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a hole. It wasn't too bright. It wasn't too deep. It was too deep. Stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out. And he... On the other side, was looking in. It actually feels like it actually has a lot of more meaning than it should. So, what do you think? It's very freeform, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really into... I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. It's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When formed out loud, it can be very powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Ah, well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influenced my poems a bit. Maybe you're not the evil bitch and you're just stuck in- You're literally put in a hole and you're abused. I'm not gonna like, suggest that because that's really bad. An epiphany. Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming out strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on the paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your poem, keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a dark, big dark puddle of ink. That's a basic thing that people should fucking know from fucking grade school. If you don't know that, then you're just stupid. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. I didn't have any real advice. I was giving you just giving you basic advice that a Melvin should know. Thanks for listening. <clears throat> well, Paul, this left us Yuri. Oh! As Yuri reads the poem, I notice her eyes lighten. Exceptional. Eh? What was that? Eh? Did did I say that loud? Yuri first covers her mouth, but then ends up covering her whole face. Um, you really didn't- you really didn't do anything wrong, Yuri. Eh, that's- I guess you're right. What am I getting nervous for? <laughs> Yuri takes a deep breath. So, what kind of writing experience do you have? The use of imagery and metaphors indicates you've written a lot of poetry before. Really? Well, that's a huge compliment coming from you. This is actually my first time, really. Huh? Yuri stares at me blankly, then looks at my poem again. Well, I know that. I just meant, um... Yuri trails off unable to make find an excuse. She traces her finger along the, the words in the poem as if breaking it down more thoroughly. Yeah, okay. This is the reason I was able to tell. It's just that there's, there are specific writing habits that are usually typical for new writers. And I've been through that myself and kind of learned to pick up on them. You're fucking lying. <laughs> I think the most noble thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they've picked up a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form it to fit together like a fucking idiot. The end result is 
the both the style and expressiveness are weakened. They are weak, stupid asshole. But I still like you, Paul, and I'm just starting to like you because that's how the game has to go. When Siri finds her train of thought as if it's her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. That Suki can be a little biased, though. Biased how? Um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. You're that Suki's a bitch. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if you're apologizing to yourself to me or Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do! I'd love to share my thoughts process behind it. Mary smiles dreamily if, as if that's a rare opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of funny. After all, this isn't supposed to be a literature club. Oh. This is going to be hard for me. I can't read cursive that well. Ghost under the light! The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing. It must be this one, the last remaining street light to have withstood the test of time. The last to be replaced, the last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe, calms breathing air of the present, but living in the past, the light flickers, I flicker back. Well, I guess I could read that pretty well. Eh! I'm sorry if I have such table hand- See, no, it's just that I can't read cursive. But what? I wasn't thinking that at all. Well, it took you a long time to read. Ah, uh, well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. I just read, write normally. Cursive is hard to read for me. Eh, that's a relief. Also, I like the poem. Even though it's short, it's really descriptive. Not, not real. I didn't find anything descriptive in my part. It might be, but I don't know poems. It wasn't too short. I used to write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest, since the first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Something that'd be a bit easier on the eyes despite my handwriting. I, I didn't know you couldn't read, I'm sorry. I'll just go out the window, bye! Are you in a ghost theory? <laughs> Actually, the story isn't about ghosts at all. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it after all. But remember that, po that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They used to do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symb symbolical compared to a ghost. Lingering to her last rem remaining piece of comfort, able to let go of the past, like my books and Lovecraft, and soon to be left with nothing. That That's more solemn, putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of it that. That's impressive. Eh? It's nothing really! Yours is impressive too, so... Nah. If anything, I could probably learn a thing or two from you. So I can stop being a fucking Melvin compared from what Monica's telling me. You think so? Yeah, of course. Ah! You know, I was really nervous about doing all of this. But yet, I enjoyed it. I'm going to keep doing my best for you, Spankor. Ah. M me too, I guess, you, f you weirdo. Phew. I guess that's everyone. Glance around the room. That was a little more shuffle than I anticipated. It's, it's as if everyone was judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club after all. Fuck literature. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions exchange. Natsuki's eyebrows fur in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Eh? Uh, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Nat Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fa- I guess you could say it's fancy. Ah, oh, thanks. Yuri's just cute. Cute? Did you completely miss symbolism or something? It's clearly about feeling of giving up. Really? How can that be? How can that be cute? I know that. I just meant 
The language, I guess. I wasn't trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um, well, I do have a couple suggestions. <coughs> uh, I was looking for, if I was looking for suggestion, I would ask someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it, and Skamancor did too. So based on that, I'd gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me, I appreciate that, but I spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless, of course, I come across something particularly inspiring. Which I haven't yet, you stupid bitch. Ugh. And Spirit Corps liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. She suddenly stands up. Oh, I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Eh. Uh, that, that's not what I... Huh? You, you just... Eh. Uh. Maybe you just tell Spirit Corps appreciates my advice more than he appreciates yours. Uh, and how do you know he did not appreciate my advice more? This is childish. Are you full of yourself? I... No! If I was full of myself, I wouldn't do I would delude go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy! Uh... Um... Is everyone that one okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one who, who's... Oh, Jesus! God damn it! <laughs> I wasn't the one whose boobs actually grew a size bigger as soon as Spankor started to show up. Natsuki! Um, Natsuki, that's a little... I... This doesn't cons This doesn't involve you. I don't like fighting guys! So they look towards me as if they just noticed I was standing there. Spankor! She, she's trying to make it look bad! That's not true. She started it. If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate the simple writing is more effective than this would have happened in the first place. What's the point of making your poems all convoluted for no reason? The means should jump out of the reader, not force themselves to have it figured out. I'm saving. I need to save. How may I explain it to that, Spankor? But wait! There's a reason we have so many deep expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning in the most effectively way. Avoiding them is only unnecessary. Limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand, you understand that, right, Spankor? Um... Well, ah, how did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know everything about writing. But whoever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. I'm saving again. Ah, so I have to eat fucking. <laughs> this is something. Um. Well, going by things. Oh Jesus. Yeah, I, I'm stopping here. It's a good place to stop. I think it is. <laughs> okay, well, have a good day. Goodbye.